Cette vidéo vous est proposée par ETAP, magazine leader européen consacré au design graphique. ETAP existe en version anglaise, espagnole et chinoise. Pour feuilleter un exemplaire ou vous abonner, rendez-vous sur etap.com. preview I started after university, when I graduated from, from art university, to make illustrations for children's books, for flat picture books, flat picture books. And so I think to myself, how can I work in three dimensions? I want to be able to work in three dimensions in paper. And I had books like this when I was a child. So as an adult, I, got, I bought some books and I look inside, I peek inside to see mm, how all these different things work. So I taught myself, I have no instruction on how to make this. I started out as amateur, amateur, but now I guess we're professionals, right? Mm -hmm. Professional pop-up makers. So very, very I taught odd. myself all of this kind of work. Uh, my path is very different. In college, I studied uh, biology, but I always did my art on the side. And uh, I was lucky enough to meet Robert and learn about Pratt Institute, where I went to art school. University. And I studied uh, product design as, as an industrial designer. I wanted to be a toy designer. For our books, we play both roles as illustrator, engineer, and writer. And this is very good for us when we're working in the studio because we're both capable of doing both tasks. So Matthew can make a, a pop-up and I can look at it and comment on it and I can make an illustration for the color and he can comment on that. So we play both roles oftentimes when we're working in our books. But for example, for um, sharks, I wrote the text and did all the research and then I gave Robert an outline of what pops to make and he would make very rough engineered white pop-ups and then from there I would make the artwork and I would draw on the pieces and I would make the uh, cut paper collage for this book. All children's books, even pop-up books, begin with a story or they begin with a manuscript. After we finish the manuscript of the text, we immediately begin to design the pop-ups. We don't draw pictures of the pop-ups, we actually begin to cut the paper and fold it and glue it to make each pop-up. So, for example, a pop-up like Alice will make this particular pop-up very simple, the first stage, very simple and just in white, a small one, a petite one. Then we'll make a bigger one and we'll refine, constantly refining each process as we're going. And it's all in white in the beginning. In yes. There's no artwork, there's no color, it's all in white and very rough. And so then after we have designed the white pop-up and it works, it's not so much to get it to pop up, we want it to pop shut, shut over and over and over again. So after we get the pop-up to work in white, then we will add the color to it. This color is made from cut paper collage. So in the studio, I and an assistant will make hundreds of different textured papers like this. Sometimes we'll think we want dinosaur, but we don't know what dinosaur it will be. So we'll make many, many different scaly textures. And for this one, we felt for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, because he was such a monster, we wanted to make it red, so. Right. And so we'll have a library of colored paper, blues and reds and greens and oranges that we can use to make all the skin, all the surfaces for each dinosaur. Well, a pop-up book is actually takes a long time to make. Um, sometimes a book like Dinosaurs or Alice can take almost a year, one year. And this is from the beginning of when we're writing the story all the way through the pop-ups till we finish the color artwork. And then it takes almost another year for them to be assembled by hand because so many folds and glues, these are made by hand. So many folds and glues each piece for each pop-up into each book. For, for everybody, everybody. But, for, but first, yeah. this is very selfish, first for us. <laughs> uh, because we feel very in touch with our inner child. I think everyone has um, that inside of them. It's, it's the delight that you have when you see something that is exciting and fun. And, and then we, we make sure that it's interesting. We try to make the writing uh, informative and yet uh, fun and light. When we first started too, we thought the books would be just for children. 
But then as we started to make more books, we would go to book signings or to conferences and there'd be so many adults, so many, I mean, sometimes there'd be a, you know, a three-year-old child with the grandmother who was 83 and they both, ah, the same way, you know what I'm saying? Or so, the grandmother would say, this is my book. Yeah, the grandmother would say, <laughs> not for my children, this is for me. And that's okay because that means the child in them is appreciating books again, which for, for us is a wonderful feeling. I think that there is a, a relationship between animation and our pop-up book animation. It's, it's different. True. There is movement. Uh, we only typically get a few seconds to have that movement, whereas animation can go for a full story. But still, a lot of our pop-ups do work in, in like animation in an element of four dimensions like time because we're, we're talking only 3D here but that's not really true because you know some of these pop-ups in here they, they are 3D but there's an element of time it opens all the way down and goes down so in that sense it is very similar to an animation like this it's going to become 3D but there's all different kinds of movement at different times things move across space so I think that there is some relationship between this and animation but I think animation has a lot more work in it, drawing all those different frames. And having to draw it over and over. Over and over, and over. just a little bit different, just a little bit different, a little bit different. It's funny because I used to be uh, interested in animation uh, when I was younger, but I wasn't patient enough uh, to draw over and over. But we have to build these over and over oh, again, so oh I think I have gosh. the patience. Yes, because many times this is a failure. These pop-ups don't work, so we have to build it over and over again until we get it right. Well, currently I've just finished The Chronicles of Narnia. My uh, upcoming fall project is something that's very dear to my heart um, and is a huge dream. Uh, it is an encyclopedia of Star Wars. The other project that uh, um, we're getting ready to work on is our next series after, yes. after Encyclo Dino. There will be, probably be Encyclo Fairy.